Thank you tonight. We give you praise. We celebrate your love this afternoon, this season. Your love is amazing. than a minute I want you to reflect on how far you have come think about all your weaknesses all your mistakes think about how many times that God had had to chase you and restore you back to the place of relationship with him don't think don't think just close your eyes I want you to reflect because it needs to there needs to be a meaning to our soul for why we are doing what we are doing today. Just think about everything you have gone through and then pick out how many times, if you can count, that by his love he has been faithful to us. He's always chasing after us. We are the lost one and he leaves the 99 for us. The Bible says herein is love. Not that we love God, but that he first loved us and gave his son as an exchange, as an atoning sacrifice for us. And I want you to lift your hands and your voice and express your love back to him this afternoon. In the midst of all that memories that you have, Lift your voice and tell him how much you love him. Everybody in this room, those online. Abraskita la brahas cobraha te la macabasi. Jebros cabraha te la cabraha de. Shut 
Father, tonight we celebrate you, the very expression of love, and our lives are witnesses, our lives are living testimonies of your unfailing love and your loving kindness by which you have drawn us to yourself. We love you. We declare our love for you. We declare our life is to please you. All that we have and all that we are belongs to you. Nothing can take your place in our lives. Absolutely nothing. The one I love leaves ever before He seals upon my heart I live for the one I love The one I love leaves ever before He seals upon my heart
of your love for us thank you thank you thank you for your presence that is lavished in this place we give you honor and praise you alone are worthy. Can you just be still? Eyes closed everywhere. Keep up, just play. Just be still. Let your soul bask in the reality of his love this evening. Please, sir. places in you, depths of your love, heights of intimacy with you. Make your love more real to us than the things around us and the things that we go through. Bring us to a place in you where all that we have and all that we desire is you. Do it tonight, Lord. Do it tonight. We all know you are our King. 
in Jesus name please be seated God bless you John 21 John 21. Do you know this song? In a moment like this, I sing a love song. I sing a love song to Jesus. In a moment like this, I sing a love song. I sing a love song to you. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. Singing, I love you, Lord. You know, it takes a revelation, a revelation that is birthed from an experience for you to become a witness and a testimony of the love of God. God is such that if He doesn't create an experience in your life, there is no way you can lay hold of the knowledge of a dimension of him every dimension of god is supposed to be experiential to become real to the individual that works with him you need to have an experience of his mercy to know what his mercy really is if you've had such experiences you will know that you don't pray for mercy simply because you have sinned you realize that mercy is the prayer of the matured in the faith. If you need the forgiveness of sins, you pray for the blood. The Bible says we have, through his blood, the forgiveness of sin. But when you pray for mercy, it is the Father himself, it is the Son himself that you are calling upon. And so every part of God has been factored into an experience for every believer. So that after such an experience, you can realize when people talk about the love of God, you can understand and you can become a witness to what they are saying. And that is what sponsors your worship. We don't worship because there is a song. We worship from an understanding. And that understanding is better from an experience. If you have ever seen God pick you despite your frailties, despite your weakness, and decides to reveal his most precious treasure, which is his spirit, which is his glory, which is him, through you, then you understand what the love of God is. The Bible says this is love. Not that we loved him, but that he first. The story of salvation is God going on the strength of that love to reach out and restore mankind to himself. But the story of Christianity is our response to that love. That's why Paul said that together with the saints we will comprehend the length and the breadth and the width and the height. And then he was short of words to describe what he was talking about. So if you have a King James or a New King James, there is a hyphen there. And he says, this is what I'm trying to talk about. To know the love of God that passes all knowledge. To know something that you cannot know. That's what it means. To know the love of God that passes knowledge. 
so you see that it's an experience that we are called into as believers and in this experience with God as we get intimate with him by his spirit we get to understand the dimensions of his love and it is that love that brings perfection in a believer you know in 1st Corinthians 13 the Bible says until that which is perfect comes he was talking about love he was not talking about rapture and so perfection before God or you rather put the summit of Christianity is when we come into the experience and the knowledge of his love and that's all this service is meant for I just want to share a little and then we'll pray there are a lot of us here that God will restore your place of intimacy with him again some of us there are certain things that you used to have with God before now but it looks like it is lost this is the service where God will restore it and I didn't plan this for this service but while I was praying just this afternoon just praying and worshiping the Lord the Lord spoke to me and said there are 21 people here that he will touch and give a fresh anointing I don't know what the anointing is for I don't know amen I just planned that I'll share a little we'll pray and then worship and then that'll be the, the end of the service but there are 21 people here you will not leave this service without a genuine touch from God John 21 give me from verse 12 I think that's where or from verse 15 rather but before I read let me give us a little background of this story uh, when Jesus resurrected he decided to reveal himself to his disciples and you see revelation is the premise upon which Christianity is founded and practiced everything about God has been revealed in Christ and God's desire is that we conform to the image of the Christ that is revealed to us by time in every dispensation so when Jesus resurrected he took time to be with his disciples and at occasions he will reveal himself to them if you start reading from verse 1 the Bible says he showed the word show is the same word for reveal meaning it was not just that he appeared there was a dimension of him that he needed to communicate to them and I don't have time to talk about spiritual encounters otherwise if this was the service for that I would have shown you that revelation sponsors everything that you will do in the faith God will have to reveal to you before you can make advancement and it so happens that the revelation of God to us through Christ factored in it is the revelation of your identity and your personality that's the reason why you need to live by revelation every day you need to desire to come into an experience where he reveals himself to you beyond the pages of the scripture because if you have an encounter you realize that it, it was not necessary what was spoken that communicated a message follow me if you have a real encounter you realize that in the realm of the spirit everything speaks the appearance of a being to you is a message of its own and it's a message sometimes that you can live to forever keep deciphering for the rest of your life how else would you describe Paul the Apostle Paul the Apostle was persecuting the church he felt that what he was doing was zealous towards God and then on his way to get hold of some Christians in the town of Damascus 
the Bible says he had an experience. That experience may not have lasted for more than a minute. A light shone on him and instantly Saul replied, he said, Who are you, Lord? Who told him he was talking to his Lord? The question was, Saul, why persecutest thou him? And instantly he replied to a person he never knew. That's the power of a revelation. Now it would take the same way, it would take that the love of God is revealed to an individual. For you to really grasp it and understand that the love of God is the full expression of God himself. That's why it's unexplainable. No shadow you will light up, mountain you won't climb up coming after me the people who wrote these songs you will have to agree that they have had experiences with god that they could not pen down in their language and so jesus in this chapter revealed himself to the disciples again and we know the story peter and some of the disciples went out to fish remember that jesus had told them in the book of luke to wait but they went, they left, maybe because they got tired of the whole thing. You know, there are times in your work with God in Christianity where you become fed up or tired of certain things. Probably you become tired of the same experiences or you become tired of waiting. Sometimes God can keep you at a state of waiting on Him, not really explaining to you why you should wait or how long you should wait some of you listening to me right now the experiences in your life is actually that you have been kept at a standby or a standstill and so thus was the story of the disciples and they got tired and decided to go for their fishing remember that when they met Jesus the first time Jesus told them follow me and I'll make you fishers of men and the Bible says they abandoned their boat and followed him but because of lack of revelation, they went back to what they had abandoned. And that is the mystery behind backsliding. Are, we, are, we, are you getting me? That's the mystery behind backsliding. When there is no longer experiences of revelation to lubricate your work with God, it is very easy to go back to what you left. And so Jesus decided to reveal himself to them again. And after everything, they caught the fish, ate with him on land. After the breakfast, verse 15. So when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter. Notice he didn't speak to any other person. He spoke to one person, Simon Peter. Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonah. Let's read together from this point. One to go. Do you love me? Give us in King James. I like the King James rendition. Lovest thou me more than this? Notice that the, plur the word this is in plural. In other words, he was talking about many things at the same time. Simon, do you love me more than these disciples? Do you love me more than your expertise of fishing? Do you love me enough to abandon this and to follow me? Simon, lovest thou me? And tonight God is asking that question to somebody who is listening. Jonathan, or John, or Mary, or whatever the name is. Lovest thou me than this? What obviously would have replaced God quickly in our lives? Because Jesus said where a man's treasure is, that's where his heart is. I don't believe that God is number one in your life because you say it I believe by the actions you portray because out of the heart comes the issues of life so God is asking Simon the one you love is asking lovest thou me more than this lovest thou me more than a car Lovest thou me more than a house? Lovest thou me more than marriage, as good as it is? Amen? 
but lovest thou me more than marriage lovest thou me more than a relationship you know in our days and thank god a lot of us are young people here it's becoming very strange that you find a lot of believers young believers who are very obsessed about relationship more than their relationship with christ let me prove it to you the moment the young man breaks your heart why is it that it takes you two weeks to get yourself together forgive and let and go on you see anytime a man falls into depression it just shows you where his hope or his faith was because whatever will keep you at a state of depression was actually like a god in your life think about it because it's my it's my idea that in this life we can lose and gain okay but as long as you can lose everything but as long as you have God I believe everything will come back so if I lose a relationship for instance why do I stay weeks turning into months in a state of depression it just showed you that I had given all my heart and that was supposed to be a relationship God gave you isn't it that the thing that he gave has become the idol in his place and that's the reason why we are not seeing the move of God in our time because the move of God will be provoked by God lovers there's a place that prayer can get you to. There's a place that fasting can get you to. But there is a reserved space for God's chasers. For people who decide that nothing in this life. Paul said, what shall separate us? He said, after all, we are killed all day long. And we are, for your sake, we are counted as sheep to the slaughter. He says, yea, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. In other words, I can lose anything. But as long as he is always at my right hand, I shall not be moved. It's only for you to dust yourself and continue the next day. But by the time a man sinks into depression because he lost something other than God, it just tells you who his God is. Doesn't matter whether he's a minister, a preacher, or a, a normal believer. And you see, let me tell you the truth. Your Christianity has been carefully planned in such a way that there will be tests at every point. And those tests will come to see who is number one in your life. To see who has the priority. He says, Simon, lovest thou me more than this? Lovest thou me more than ministry? As good as it is, oh. As good as it is what if God tells you I'm going to keep you silent for 10 years no ministration no nothing just stay stay with me and you are anointed you are skillful your phone is ringing every day for ministrations but what did God say stay that's why <laughs> that's why love is good though but when it comes to entering into a covenant relationship it takes more than love it takes commitment that's when you know that there are rules to the game lovest thou me more than ministry I, I tell you that's one question that I, I do this examination every day and I've said it before and I've said it again if God tells me that this is my last ministration if he tells me this night Jonathan you are done with what I asked you to do in Meduguri. Leave Meduguri and go to where I will show you. You won't see me in workers' meeting tomorrow. I'm telling you. It's a simple thing. We have capable hands. You do this, you do that, you do that. And if God permits, I will carry my clothes. If he doesn't permit, I will go like that. Because there was a time in my life where I was in the wilderness of experience. It looked like I lost everything. And that was when God was more real to me than everything I thought I lost. So I, I realized I didn't lose anything. 
when you say when you claim you have lost something that's only your perception of what happened if you lost everything and you have God you didn't lose anything but if you lost God and have everything you lost everything including your life because the Bible says in him we live we move you understand love has thou me more than this love has thou me more than your academics is good to excel well but there are times in life where certain things will come and stand side by side between you before God or between you and God and then it now becomes a show to see whether you will compromise God's place or you'll be resolute about him three Hebrew boys were faced with the fairy furnace they saw how that the people who were hitting the furnace were killed by the furnace and when he came to bowing down what, what was it just to bow to an idol what's there does it take more than a minute just bow and continue you were they were already government officials it was not just about salvaging their life it was about salvaging their position they were government officials and they were being paid so in our days it will be like a job opportunity you have and i tell you many people make the decision the wrong way like them these days where you have to forge something in your in your documents just because you need a job you have chosen that job over god just bow but then they looked at nebuchadnezzar they say oh nebuchadnezzar before we we'll, we'll call you oh king but at this point you have touched a very red button oh nebuchadnezzar we are not careful to answer let, let just know that before we came to Babylon as slave, we were devoted to serving him. So the God we serve is able to deliver us, but in case he doesn't, it's a love affair. Do you understand? So whether the relationship come or not is a love affair, we still continue. Whether I get married this year or not, it's still a love affair. Do you understand? Nothing changes. God, you promised me a job months ago. It has not come. We are still together. It takes experiences to come to that point. Though. Because God will not quickly redeem you from the situation. He will leave you there. Simon, lovest thou me? more than this give us verse 19 because you know all the answers he gave give us verse 19 okay 18 rather so after simon peter had answered three times when you see a repetition in the bible is for emphasis no i could i could just I, while i read this scripture i could just imagine what was on jesus heart this was the young man who when Jesus asked his disciples whom do you say that I am he was the only one who spoke and said you are the Christ son of the living God and Jesus said flesh and blood didn't reveal this meaning that there are certain revelations that can come by flesh and blood what kind of revelations when you say someone else's revelation of God that revelation is of God but it is of flesh and blood and many of us our worship our life with god is predicated upon other people's experience you have not journeyed deep into the belly of god to find your own unique path and i said it last year that christianity is a journey into the belly of god so jesus thought he had finally seen someone that at least if he goes away this person will be the instrument by which the, the early church will be built this at least this will be a man to always point them back to who i am because this confession is coming from an intimate experience so jesus was seeing his replacement in simon only for him to be gone a few days and simon took them back to where he picked them from see that's the reason why your dealings are very strong let me talk to somebody 
That's the reason why God, when God is dealing with you, He doesn't pity you. He takes you through hard stuff. You know why? Because your generation is, is going to survive on the strength of your conviction. Not just your confession. Your conviction. When they see that you are willing to die for this thing, they will follow you. And God, is, God takes the glory in that. So Jesus turned and looked at him. Obviously, Jesus was disappointed. And Jesus asked him, Simon, lovest thou me? Do you love me enough to wait on me? That God can give you a promise and it takes ages and it looks like it will not come. Meanwhile, other people around you who are not even as good as you in the faith are testifying. But because of love, you are willing to wait. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting. I don't mind waiting on you, Lord. That's a confession of faith that is born out of love you know that's what paul said he said now these three faith hope and love but the greatest is, is love that you love him so much that you are willing to wait simon lovest thou me and verse 18 he said verily verily i say unto thee when thou was young thou gettest thyself and walkest whither thou wouldest give us a new king james because all this whither thy getters and all of that I want to save my tongue this night. Amen. He's writing as if he's praying in tongues. Most assuredly, I say to you, when you were younger, <laughs> now this was the reason why Jesus was asking him that question. Jesus was about to give him his faith. He said, when you were younger, you gathered yourself and walked where you wished. But when you are old, you will, st you will stretch out your hands and another will gird you. And carry you where you did not wish. Verse 19. He said this he spake. Right? This spoke he. Signifying by what death. He will do what? Glory. So what, it, what does it mean to glorify God? Because in John chapter 12 verse 24. Jesus said the hour has come. For the son of man to be glorified. And if I be lifted up. I will draw all men unto me. He says except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies. People thought that for Jesus, the summit of all he came to do on earth was just perform miracles and become the star man. But Jesus had one goal in his mind. That the greatest thing he would do to glorify God. And to glorify God means to reveal him to people. Because I taught you last year that the glory is the summit of who God has and all, all that he has and all that he is. So, he said, glorifying God to him was dying on the cross even though that's not a very good future to choose imagine when you were born and the first thing you get you get to know is that you were born to die i mean i know that everybody's going to die but imagine a prophecy coming to you at birth that you will die because that's what happened to jesus the bible says they brought gifts to him gold frankincense and mild mild was an embalming oil that they used to embalm dead bodies so what was the meaning of that gift this is a child that was born to die from birth think of all the many things that he was deprived of at the prime of his life he was cut off the bible said in isaiah 53 who shall declare his generation because he didn't get married see this love walk of the kingdom will make you deny some if you have not started denying some things you can't say you love god yet if you cannot point to your life and look at things you left and left for good we can't say you are in a relationship with god because anything can happen and you may fall away the bible says in the last days the love of many will wax cold because there was no love at first say so when you were young you were used to going about the way you want but when you grow old somebody will carry you where you don't want to let me just explain what it is that's just and that was what happened to peter 
but that's how that's the summit of the Christian life that when you are a babe in God you are used to God giving you everything behold what manner of love the father has bestowed unto us that we should be called the children of God isn't it Romans 8 31 if God be for us who can be against us if he did not spare his son but gave him for our sake how much more shall he not with him freely give us all things first Corinthians chapter 3 he said for all things are yours and you are Christ and Christ is God those are those are good good scriptures we call new creation realities as a babe in God isn't it just be, because Jesus said when you were young you are used to going about the gospel to a child of God a child of God is that he has everything that he, he needs in Christ but then as you begin to grow with God you realize that you were brought into a system of kingdom and in the kingdom there is a king and kings but there is one supreme king and his will becomes law and you must submit to that government so as you begin to grow in the faith you will see that many things will be stripped away from you several desires will be killed will be crucified the bible will say mortify meaning that there are some things god will not take away you will be the one to break up with those things now when i said break up i didn't i was not talking about relationship but just in case there's a relationship we must break up from better break up this night too i tell you this is the person i want to marry and then you look at the the, the man and you see a potential unbeliever in that man and then she will tell you i want to marry someone who is godly I want to marry someone who is godly you know that's the language now godly everything is godly god-fearing okay they, they have god-fearing and so for some of them god-fearing is at least he goes to church once in a month hey. this one that the guy is like this are you sure no when we get married god will change him no it's nothing like that oh it's not my sermon but let me enter there a little there's nothing like that god will change him or god will change her there's nothing like that and then they become unsure about the relationship then they go to pray and say god if this relationship is your will scatter it, uh, it, it let it continue if it's not your will scatter it they finish praying and they don't know God has answered their prayer two months later the guy said I want to break up and then she cries for one month first before she calls him back and say what did you say <laughs> have you seen that this is real this is how it happens and vice versa with the guys too it's just that guys doesn't they don't show their own but the moment they come back to the room they, they are not talking to anybody I thought you were the one who prayed and said, if it's your will. See, let me tell you, don't pray that prayer if you're not ready. Oh. God, if it's your will. Sometimes his will is not your desire. Meanwhile, he created you as a free moral agent to have your will. So, he can allow you to have your way, have your will. It's not his will for you, but out of love. And because God doesn't want to break your heart and make you discouraged, have your way. That's what we call the permissive will, isn't it? That kind of marriage, you just manage it till you people are called home. I'm telling you. By the privilege of God's grace, we'll meet some of them. And you just know there's nothing you can tell them. Because this thing from the inception was not of God. So what do you do? You manage it like HIV. But when you say, if it's your will, it means you have let go of your will. Like Jesus prayed in the garden. He said, my will is that this cup should pass over. But nevertheless, not my will, but your will. So don't pray that prayer if you are not ready. By what death? You know, by this time, they didn't know that this was what Jesus meant. They didn't know understand that among all the apostles john was the last apostle to die so it was later when the apostles had died when he was writing based on experience and wisdom 
that he realized that what Jesus was saying 50 years ago was that he was talking about the death Simon would die and you call death dying glorify God for some you may not die physically but when God begins to take certain things away from you is death in process when God begins to pluck out certain things sometimes it looks unbearable sometimes the things you love the most maybe like a relationship or a car you bought and you admire this car so much that you can clean it and forget to read your Bible in the morning then God will leave you for six months and then one day as you wake up in the morning as you are he will allow you to clean the car first wash the car then he will say take this car and give it to so so person and sometimes the person you will give it to does not deserve it humanly speaking you know why everything he's doing is to show you how love operates so that when you give that car you, you bought with your heart and money to someone who doesn't deserve it you will now realize that you don't deserve the life you are living he was one who gave you so it was not just about giving it was a lesson he was teaching you or God will wake you up one morning and say empty your account some of you are already in that class you empty it you start advising yourself am I a fool or am I okay let me tell you another story and then we'll pray Luke chapter 21 from verse 1 to 4 the story of Jesus sitting in the temple and he was sitting opposite the temple treasury he had been teaching and then he stopped for a break to watch those who were casting their offerings and the Bible clearly said that he saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury and then there came a poor widow now in Israel for you to be described as a widow a true widow it means that you no longer not just that your husband is dead but you don't have any children to take care of you you have no one to take care of you that was why in first timothy paul was talking to timothy and he told him he talked to him about those who were widows indeed people who really had nobody such was an example of anna in luke chapter 2 the bible says she married a husband from her virginity and after seven years he died and she lived all through as a widow not departing from the temple but giving herself to herself to prayer and fasting now that's not really a cool way to live and this night some of you something will happen to you when you go back you will discover that your appetites have changed I'm telling you, some of you will leave here and start a fast tomorrow I'm telling you a widow who lost her husband lost everything and is that it, they, I thought the best thing she should be doing is to sit down weep and wait for people to help her the Bible says she was minding God's business so if you check very critically the Bible told us that she was from the tribe of Asher and according to history in Bible we discover that there was no prophet from the tribe of Asher yet this woman was described as a prophetess that there are certain anointings that are not meant to be for you but because of your love and passion for God you can push yourself into that inheritance an example is Paul Paul said I know a man who was caught up to the heavens whether in the flesh or in the spirit I don't know 14 years ago and he saw things that are not lawful for men in meaning that that kind of revelation had not been given to men not even among the apostles but God looked at a man who was crazy for him even to death he said come I will show you something and I hope you know that Paul's greatest revelations and writings he wrote them in jail when he wrote I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me he was chained unlike Christians of nowadays that their confession is exactly what they are going through but here is a man writing to people he will tell them rejoice again I say and he was writing with chains what are you rejoicing for you are about to die somebody in the prison they should be helping he said my God shall supply because the Bible says, cast not your confidence which had great recompense for his reward see after that you have been patient enough you will fulfill the you will fulfill the promise 
Love for God can take you to a point where human beings will look at you and say, this one is mad. Because your decisions are inhuman. Being an alien is not about having superpowers. It's about having super desires. So this widow had nothing. No one to take care of her. In fact, these were the people that God gave them laws in Deuteronomy and in Leviticus. He said, there is a portion of your tithe you will not eat. Keep it in the gate so that the widows and the fatherless will come and eat. In other words, this woman belonged to a social class that was destitute in poverty. She had nothing. But the Bible says she came in. And while the rich were giving their gifts, she put her own two mites. And Jesus looked at her and said, this woman has given all that she had. Say these rich guys, they gave out of their abundance. But this one, what she gave was small. But she gave all. Because giving is measured by what you keep back after giving. Not by what you give. Did you understand that? Let me leave you. Because if I preach that one, some people, this night, some people will not eat. Giving is measured by what you keep back when you give. Not by what you give. Seller. Give me your salary for the next three months. That means except God send rain, you already know your account balance. You don't need to check. Because you use the remaining one to recharge your phone till you got finished and started borrowing for NTN. Meanwhile, God said, give all. And you see, the reason why I'm using law, uh, giving, is because the greatest expression of love as penned in scripture is true giving for god so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son meaning that jesus was the only expression of god in flesh now what if jesus never had another only begotten son again because this son he was giving he was not giving the son to live he was giving the son to die what if i hope you know god god took a risk there some of you think is god you are the only one that should exercise faith even god exercise faith the bible says have, have the faith of god or the god kind of faith that's mark eleven twenty two, right even god in the sacrifice of jesus he exercised faith it was a risk what if they didn't what if this son died and didn't live again Question number one. Question number two. What if this son died for the sins of the whole world and the whole world turned around and reject him? So it was a risk for your salvation. And how many believers in our time are willing to take risk for God? Even to the detriment of their life. I will show you a scripture and then we'll pray. Jesus said this will do. The reason why you see me reading 21, 21 is because i've taught us before that there is a revelation of time and season in numbers and if you read if you want to know what god is saying read all the 21st chapters or read the 21st book in the 21st book ecclesiastes that guy was backsliding when he wrote that book he tried many things he was looking for how to drown a void that was in him that God had placed there. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 3, verse 13, or 11 or 13, that God had placed eternity in the heart of man. In other words, God kept a void in man that will make man not satisfied until he finds God in the midst of all of God's creation. Do you understand that? Only you can satisfy me. Only you can satisfy. So this guy instead of him to search for god he started looking for pleasure in other things that's why when you start reading from chapter 1 to chapter 2 of ecclesiastes he will tell you i tried this i tried that i built houses i got this i got that he said but all of them is vanity because the space that god has in your life nobody can occupy it smith wigglesworth said they asked him will you ever be satisfied he said i will only be satisfied with a satisfaction that can never be satisfied I want you to say these are the things that should motivate your pursuit of God not competition not anointing love
that's why i read all this 21st chapter so that you can see an expression of people or you can see case scenarios where the love of the love of god from man is being tested now give me the last one and then we'll pray acts chapter 21 Paul was on his way to Jerusalem. In verse 4, he met some disciples in Cyprus and they prophesied to him and told him that evil is waiting for you in Jerusalem. You would think that at that point, Paul would turn back. Just like I was talking to one of my mentors one time and he said one of his daughters was disturbing him. Say, Papa, you have not prophesied on my head. You have not prophesied on my head. Prophesy, prophesy. And then came the prophecy. He said, I see you being held in the camp as a COVID-19 patient. That's a good prophecy, but And just so you know, let me tell you one thing about prophecy. There are things you can do to provoke it, but you cannot provoke the content. Prophecy is the will of God. The person that is saying it, he has died first to himself. That's why he can hear God to that extent. And sometimes you must not always hear thus said the Lord for you to be prophecy. Sometimes admonition from scripture is prophetic to you. People like when God says, next week you will get a car. But when God says, give 50,000, no, that one is not God. In fact, the moment you try it from tomorrow, you start trending on social media. That guy, that pastor, where they call him money. Say that's what they will say. Eh. They chop people money. That's why it's fresh like that. So, this guy told Paul, evil is waiting for you in Jerusalem. Paul continued the journey. Then the Bible says he got to a place, I think that was, where was that? Caesarea. And he met a prophet called Agabus. Agabus was a mighty prophet as at that time. He was someone who God used to give global prophecies to. So, if you see Agabus in a place, everybody's shaking. And then Agabus came to them and collected the belt of Paul. And he tied his hands and his leg. And he said, Thus shall they do to the man who owns this belt. In other words, that in Jerusalem, the Jews will bound Paul and give him to the Gentiles. Excuse me, was that not how Christ died? Was it not the Jews that surrendered him to Pilate, who was a Gentile? Now, being a good student of the Bible, of the life and story of Jesus Christ, when that came to Paul, Invariably, it meant you are about to go the same way Jesus went. But let's look at something in verse 12. Verse 12. Now, when we heard these things, both we and those from that place pleaded with him not to go up to Jerusalem. The first prophecy that came, the, the companions of Paul, they chest it. But when Agabus prophesied, they say, Ah, this one, it will happen. No? Please don't die. He said, we pleaded with him. But look at what Paul said. Then Paul answered, what do you mean by weeping and breaking my heart? Look at this statement. He said, for I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. How many of us can make this testimony? Is this not a crazy man? They will kill you and prophecy say, don't go. But what did he say? He said, by crying for me, you are breaking my heart. In other words, you should be rejoicing for me that I'm going to Jerusalem to die. Yoruba say, kolo warrior. Do we have Yoruba people here? Is it true? Abi, I got it back. Uh -huh. Something's wrong with him. And if you really love God, a time will come in your walk with God where you make certain decisions. It must if, you have, if it does not happen, you are entering the experience after this night. Because there are many things on the pathway to life. That's why the Bible says narrow is that way. There are many things that will contend. Some of you have no idea what you are supposed to. The sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice that your life should be worthy of giving at the end of your work with God. We all look after a Christianity that is juicy. Last week was miracle service. Don't be so. Reign of favor. Amen. This one, that one. But when God says you are going to die for me. Or God say, I'm sending you to Syria to preach the gospel. He say, no, 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 no. I rebuke that voice in the name of Jesus. Syria. God, speak to me about Syria. No, 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 no. And now we are coming there. With the way the world is getting, things are going to be very difficult at some point for believers. All the restrictions you see them placing 
is actually the church that is the target now there are nations in this world that can't gather like this for service some of them for a whole year it's coming gradually we are we are the last days in this corrupt generation where the love of many will wax cold and men will become lovers of self it is in the difficulties that God will stand to test those that love him that was why when Stephen was about to die he said his eyes were open and he saw the son of man standing we have read in scripture that other people who died angels carried them to heaven but for Stephen Jesus himself received him why Do you love him tonight? Are you ready to take your relationship with him to another level? Are you ready to fall madly in love with God to a point where your passion will compel your critics? Did you hear what I said? When they see that you, you, you can't be separated from your conviction, they will repent. The reason why we don't have souls saved in churches is because our Christianity does not show a strong conviction enough to convict the vilest offender. We don't have people who are passionate about God. We don't have people who say they love God and mean it. We will see by your priorities. We will see by your decisions. God can call you to ministry, but what if your ministry is never pulpit and all your life you are imagining pulpit? Let me tell you the truth. I never knew that I would do what I'm doing today. You hear me? If you had asked me years before now, I would have told you I was a music minister. That's why your talents do not necessarily reveal your purpose. I know you read all the books of purpose, but let me tell you something. You can't know purpose except you have a divine encounter. It's a revelation. It's, 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 it's enveloped in the spirit realm. You must have an encounter with the supernatural for you to know your purpose. It's not, you can't just look at your, your talent and say, yeah, I, I looked at my talent I thought I was going to be a, a musician. Till God started breaking off those things from me. Left production, music production. Left, if, I, if I was a music producer by now, I know how much I'll be making. I'll be? Yes. Maybe I would have even gone secular because that time I used to like producing R&B. You know R&B music. Ah, I used to like it that time. So by now, I would have backslided, I know. But then God began to strip those things from me. And it took me through a two-year process where he was not talking to me plainly. He just kept me at the spot waiting on him. What do you explain praying and fasting, studying the word of God, and you don't get one direct word from God, but you stay there waiting? Not even school. So, and I know he did all that because he wanted me to die twice. Death number one. He wanted me to die to the things I desired. And then he also wanted me to die to the glory that comes with what I'm doing now. Because before God gives you a thing, he kills the desire of that thing in you before he gives you. You don't know. That's why he delays sometimes. The delays. When did a miracle become expensive for God? Tell me. But sometimes when God delays, like he did with Abraham, it was because he wanted to be assured that he remained number one in Abraham. So that when he told Abraham, go and sacrifice that son I gave you, Abraham went by faith. In fact, to, for you to know he went by faith, he didn't consult with his wife. Paul said, I'm ready. So we must love God in the midst of our circumstances. We must love God in the midst of our weaknesses and we must love God to the point of death we are going to pray this evening and the prayer tonight is that for some of us God will restore us to our love walk with him and therefore some of you thank God for where you are but God wants to take you further with him there are things he cannot show you now because of where you are with him there are things that there are places you cannot come into because of the things you are still attached to it was when Lot had been separated from Abraham that God told him, look as far as your eyes can see. 
This is the extent of the promise. But there had to be a separation. For some of us, there will have to be a separation this night. There are things that must give way between you and God. And as you begin to ponder in your mind before you pray, you will know what I'm talking about. Sometimes, subtly, these things have ventured into our heart without our knowledge. It's time for us to let go. Otherwise, I fear that there is a place in God that we may not touch. It will take dead men to carry the glory of God. And it is the process of love that brings you to a point of death. Death, where all your desire is him. It is at that point that you can carry his glory. And then revival no longer becomes a program. Revival becomes a personality. You can walk through your street and it is revival. People can look at you and they see Christ in the flesh. Why? Because they see a man who is dead to his desires, dead to his ambitions. And all he's living for is to express God. For some of you, you love God and you don't have a problem with anything. But the moment people talk bad about you, you can weep for two weeks. There's still pride you need to deal with there. I hope you know. Let me tell you something. We're about to pray. In this, in this kingdom, in this race, but as you are rising with God, expect people to talk bad about you. Expect people to criticize you. Expect people to misunderstand you. And why you love them, don't be sorry for what they say. Some of us, we are too good in defending ourselves. So any small gist you hear about yourself, you follow the gist. So that you can start bribing everybody. I didn't do it, I didn't do it, I didn't. The Bible said, it, Jesus that was not guilty. The Bible says, like a sheep to the slaughter, he was led. And like a lamb, he opened not his mouth. Didn't he have the right to defend himself? He told Pilate, he said, if my kingdom was of this world, my servant would have fought. When Peter wanted to defend him, he said, don't you think I would have called my father to send 12 legions of angels? For God's sake, a legion meant 6,000 angels. That's why the Bible says in Philippians chapter 2, he stripped himself of everything. Some of you, you too like to defend yourself, explain yourself for every reason. Maybe you need to have an Isaiah experience. You know the Isaiah experience? When Isaiah saw God, the first thing that happened was an angel took life coals and burnt his mouth. What do you think that means? The protocol of the secret is that you don't talk. Some of you talk, you can't you can defend, explain. No, he must die this night. He must die this night. Because the anointing coming on your life will be very controversial. Will you explain to everybody? You're a young lady and it's time for you to get married. Can you explain to everybody that God says wait for five years? Even though waiting for five years means you'll be 35 when the five years is over. You, you see, don't, don't just... <clears throat> this life, walk by revelation, walk by word. Let God speak to you and let that word sponsor you. Are we ready to pray this night? In your seated position, I want you to pray for the next one minute. But some of you are saying, Lord, restore me back to a place of intimacy with you. Restore me to that place of fellowship. Restore me back to that Eden experience. And for some of you, you said, Lord, thank you for where you have brought me. But this is not enough. This is not all that I can see. If this is all that there is, then my life is poor in its reflection of you. And so you are praying a prayer asking God for more. You know, sometimes the most powerful prayer to pray is, Lord, more of you. More. More. It can change the course of your existence for the next 10, 15 years. Paul had an encounter with Jesus, but yet... He went to the Arabia of, of, of the wilderness of Arabia and he stayed there for 14 years. All his contemporaries were in ministry, but he decided to wait on God. Some of you are praying and saying, Lord, more of you, more. And this evening I'm ready to contend for another dimension of your love, another dimension of your mercy, another dimension of your presence. Some of you are ministers. Thank God and bless him for his presence so far. But I hope you know that God cannot be quantified. There is so much more. Whichever category you stand, lift your voice and pray. 
Elabrando brasi kapalaria de la boshi atana. Jere barahati le brahata kabarusi. Barusi kalabrata kabaladia. Pray, come on. I will lay down my idols and gods that I've made.
this last prayer point. It's a two prayer point in one. I prayed this prayer the night before my birthday. Birthday was last week. I told God, I said, listen to the prayer because that's what you pray. I told God, I said, bring me to a point where I will never trust man above you. Number one. And number two, make me an expression of your love. My gospel must not just be when I preach or I sing. May people look at my life and see one who has been brought into an unconsumable union with the Father. Lift your voice and pray these two prayer points in one. The first one deals with your priority. The second one deals with your pursuits. Come on, come on, pray. Come on, pray. May I love you so much to trust in you above everything else. When all fails, may I remain firm in you. And Lord, make my life an expression of your love. Make my life a testament of true intimacy with your spirit. The Bible says, hearing is love perfected, that we may have boldness when we approach him on the day of judgment. For as he is, so are we in this world. For love does not produce fear, but perfect love casts out fear. Consume me with your love, Father. my life thy fuse the fragrance of your love
career, my academics, my marriage, my family, my relationship. Everything is all about you. This night I surrender it all. I let go of everything else so that you can become my everything. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord, above everything else. Above everything else. When all has been said and done, my love for you remains. Everybody standing as much as you can, eyes closed, no movement. This service cannot close with the way it is if we don't give a moment for who want to experience or who want to know Jesus as their Lord. But those who are here, you have enjoyed everything about the service, but you know that there is no relationship between you and God. You are not born again. You know the seed of God is not in you. You can't seem to understand why we do what we do. And you need to have an experience of that love. With all eyes closed everywhere, I want you to raise your right hand to heaven. Let's pray for you. I thought that the greatest miracle for an unbeliever is the miracle of salvation. And for us believers, the greatest miracle is the miracle of transformation. You are here and you say, man of God, I know I need to say yes to Jesus. Unashamedly, raise your right hand to heaven and raise it very well so I can see you. Yes, I like that hand. Thank you so much. All eyes closed everywhere. If you are raising your hand, please raise it for the next 10 seconds. Or perhaps you were once a believer, you loved God. But certain things have happened, probably frustrations, people backstabbed you, people hurt you, and you couldn't heal from those experiences. And now you don't know where you are again between you and God. And you want to be restored. I want you to join them and raise your right hand. Now those of you raising your right hand, I want you to take a step of faith and walk to the front. Come and meet me right now. In the next 10 seconds, walk out of your seat wherever you are. If you raise your right hand, you are making a decision tonight for Jesus. Or you want to be restored again. Take a step of faith and walk to the front. I want to meet you. I need to pray for you. If you know you still need to join them, please join them. You need to make a decision for Jesus. You need to receive his love and his life into you. You need to experience what new birth really is. I want you to join them. Hallelujah. Now, those of you in front, I want you to just repeat after me. I want you to mean these words from your heart. As you stand right now before me, you are standing before the King of Kings. I want you to imagine him standing before you with his arms open wide to receive you. It doesn't matter what has happened. It doesn't matter the past. My spirit tells me there's somebody who should join them. And you are a lady, as I'm seeing you. My spirit tells me there's a lady who should join them doesn't matter what has happened before man of god you don't know i love god but you don't know what i've done before come like that there's nothing as worse as you can ever do and i want you to believe that after this prayer you become one with him 
and you experience a new birth again say after me say lord jesus those of you in front say after me say lord jesus i come to you today i acknowledge my sin and i acknowledge my fault but i thank you for dying for me and by faith i receive eternal life i receive your everlasting love thank you for saving me for restoring me in jesus name father i pray for these ones and right now i thank you because they are born again holy spirit seal them bring them into experiences of this salvation that they've encountered from today i declare that your love for them will begin to walk in them to grant them victory over sin victory over the devil and may they love you and serve you passionately all their days in jesus name amen amen god bless you my brothers those of you in front god bless you all right you are now born again or you are you have been restored back um who is seeing them okay um just follow that brother there he will reach out to you get your contact and then talk to you and then you will join us and close the service okay this way please please direct him direct him amen hallelujah can we just stand can you be still everywhere make sure you're not moving about eyes closed please I love you Lord and I lift my voice to worship you oh my soul rejoice Take joy, my King, in these words you hear. Let it be a sweet, sweet sound to my King. I see what look like clothes in the spirit like white garments and they are not just white but they are shining with light and I see the angel of the Lord descending with these garments and putting it on people this garment is grace for a new level of intimacy with his presence and father as i come to seven let your right hand find those people all over and across this auditorium eyes closed everywhere as i come to seven those that you have marked to bring into a deeper dimension of intimacy that they will know your presence they will not just sense it they will know it Father, as I count to seven, let your angel place those garments on them. One, two, three, four, five, six, and now seven. You will know his presence. You will know his presence. You will hear his voice. And he will say, this is the way. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you. Just to be close to you is my deal. 
desire Just the strings and the same Just to be close to you Just to be close to you I feel it like a warm breeze Mantling the people of God Just to be close to you Just to be close to you I just want to be close to you That's my desire Please lift your hands, everybody. Father, you told me 21 people here. You will touch them. You will give them a fresh touch. You will give them a fresh anointing. An anointing for what? I don't know. But Father, as I count 21, let your right hand touch them. Bring them into an encounter with your power. Put a fresh anointing on their life. An anointing that takes away dryness. An anointing that takes away limitation. An anointing that brings restoration. Please eyes closed, hands lifted. Lord, as I count 21, find them. One. Two, three, four, five, twenty one of them, six, seven, eight. For some of you, I see an anointing for new visions, an anointing for visions on new horizons. Step into it now. Nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Fresh oil. My horn shall thou exalt as the horn of your unicorn. I see somebody right now, you feel it. Something cold running from your head down to your spine. You feel like something chill running from your head down to your spine. 21. Thank you, Lord. Blessed be your name. Jesus, you believe. 
Father, may you always take the glory in our lives. May glorifying you be all that we live for, all that we exist for. We vow that you forever be lifted. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name. And God's people say, Amen. Are we blessed tonight? Are we blessed tonight? Yeah, just give God a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Please, if you are worshiping with us for the first time in a pneumatic service like this, can you just make your way to the front while the rest of you sit down? If you are here for the first time, please make your way to the front while the rest of us just sit down. Celebrate them. I know they are coming. Please keep clapping for them. You are very important people. We love you. We celebrate you for coming. Keep clapping for them. Celebrate God for them. What a number. What a number. Keep clapping till they are all in the front. Jesus, you believe in I. Hallelujah. And those of you in front, we honor you for coming. We know it was a sacrifice for you to be here. And we appreciate you. This is Pneumatech. Pneumatech is a platform put together by Sons of Glory Network International. And in this place, we experience the wisdom, the presence, and the power of God. My brother, you're welcome. Thank you. Please help. Help. Help him. Amen. And God is building us through his word and his spirit, okay? For some of you who are not used to this kind of service, I apologize. This is how the spirit of God does his thing, okay? And I know that you are blessed and your life is changed. I just want to pray for you briefly before I allow our officers to attend to you and then we'll close the meeting. Is that okay? My dear, come. Come. Hold my hand. With your two hands. Just hold my hand with your two hands. Father, release it to her in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you for these ones. I bless them in your name, in your might, in your power, in your love. And I declare that their lives will never be the same. I declare that they are changed from today. I declare that your grace is at work in their lives. And I declare that they are victorious above every circumstance. And above all things, Lord, cause them to experience the dimensions of your presence of your love like never before. In Jesus' name and God's people say,